Exercise number six. For this exercise, we're going to look more in depth to count for each um, for loops. So let's begin. First, we're gonna copy for an exercise four a few files just to avoid typing too much and taking way too long uh, so we're gonna copy locals uh, providers as well copy that guy Oops. paste it out mm. what else oh terraform tf bars paste uh, let's copy the main tf as well and we can just edit that one okay that's it it's those four files yeah okay so we're gonna leave the locals alone that, that's fine the way it is for now uh providers is fine mm. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Terraform TS bars is fine. Oh, account replication. Yeah, we don't need that for this exercise. So we got rid of that. Our main, excellent. Okay. Oh, variables TF. I'm missing that one. Uh, where is it? Do not see that file in here. That is interesting. Oh, it's right here. Uh, copy and paste. That's the last one. Perfect. So delete that one. Um, so we're gonna change the resource group instead of being um, a string. We're gonna make it a list. Uh, resource groups I'm just gonna call it that way just to make it plural uh, the rest stays the same so we're going to change it in here on the Terraform TF bars it's a list no longer a string so bracket production is going to be the name of one of the uh, resource group that, I, that I'm about to create and the other one is going to be development perfect that should do it mm -hmm. now we go back to our main file we're gonna use count so you can see how it works so instead of calling the variable directly we're going to get the length of the list which is two elements um, the reason behind that is because count doesn't take uh, any other type of uh, input, only numbers, that's it. Uh, you cannot put the uh, strings in there. It uh, gives you an error and basically goes against the way it's supposed to work anyway. So we do length of the variable uh, resource groups. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and the variable resource group is a list and the length is gonna be two because it's two elements. So with that, the name is going to be oh actually part that resource groups uh, count 
dot index. Basically, it goes it's two elements, so it's going to start with zero, element zero. It's going to look it up and see what the name of that element is in here. So it's going to say, oh, the first one is production, I mean, element zero is production in here. So that's going to, going to be the name of the resource group. That's all it's doing. Uh, bar location, we leave it as it is. Uh, tags, local required tags. Yeah, that's fine. So that's how count would work in this context. Let me see if we have to change anything else for now. No, we don't. So let's do Terraform mm, in it, of course. Terraform uh, plan. This time I'm, I'm not going to save uh, a local TF plan because we are just testing. This is just to show you the difference between a uh, count for each, for loops, and a few other things that I might add. So use Terraform plan. It's going to be saved in memory. Hmm, taking quite a bit for just resource groups so okay perfectly finally uh, one to ask you one why you one uh, oh yeah of course because I haven't saved the file um, save all we run plan again. Third value resource groups. Oh yeah. So we cancel that. Uh, basically what it tells me this error is that the resource group is not defined on the Terraform TF bars because yeah, it's missing an S. So let me add that. Uh, do a save. And now we should be good. Actually, let me just to validate to see if I have any additional mistakes. Nope, no more mistakes, apparently. So therefore plan. Now we should have actually two resource groups, not just one. to add uh, um, resource group one which is development yeah that's the position that it has and this, the one the other one is zero which is production keep in mind that if this maps to the position in the list and that's very important and I'm going to show you later so with that we just do terraform uh, apply and we can pass the auto approve flag if you want to you don't want to type yes um, so you do that and automatically passes the, the, the yes for you doesn't check anymore mm. well it does it gives you the, the output of what's going to do but immediately starts uh, creating the resources on, on, on the cloud so you see this here and right underneath it should ask you hey do you want to proceed so it gives you time to actually look at what it's going to create. Well, we bypass that right now. So, error. Oh, I guess it was something there running from, I left something from a previous run, which is fine. Let me just clear it out. Um, go here, delete. this one and I gotta delete the other one and 
and we delete it. Okay. I think now it should be good. Oh, let me refresh just to make sure. Okay, I think it's, it's done. I just deleted through the UI. So let me run the plan because it's going to tell me that it's still the plan. You can import stuff from uh, into your state file, but we can we, we're gonna look at that later. Um, okay, it's two to us, zero to destroy. So therefore, apply or approve. Now we should complete with our errors. Maybe. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, created the resources. Perfect. Uh, created development on production. Okay, I'm about to show you the downsides of using count on one of the advantages of using a for each so let me show you the downside let's say for whatever reason i move this around i mean they're going to re remain the same it's just in different positions so now development is the first element which is zero because it starts by uh, with zero and um, production is going to be number one meaning the second element on this list perfect that's the only change we just move these guys around nothing else has changed so it shouldn't do anything but it will it will tell you oh okay since you change this i need to destroy these resources because now they are different so this is the disadvantage of using count for doing this kind of thing oh i need to save it first Dum, save all Run plan again, and now plan is gonna tell me. Two to add, two to destroy. Force of replacement because of the position of, of the position in them. So now with that, let's leave it alone um, we're going to look at for each so i'm going to keep this as a, as a reference um, i'm going to just comment it out interesting That is interesting. Okay, so there you go. C style does this multi-line uh, comment. Your kind of comment is with this. Um, I think I have misspelled, but oh, now I cannot delete it. Well, you get the idea. Still misspell, but it's not here and there. We'll look at that later. So this is the other kind of comment. So this is a single line, and this one over here is multi-line, multi-line comment. So, oh, forgot to copy these lines. Um, six. Okay, we paste it over, and now we're gonna do it differently. We come, we won't be changing anything on our variables. We're gonna leave it as a list. We're gonna 
force it to be a set or a map uh, so instead of count we replace that with for each for each and instead of length um, we do to set so basically make it a set or a map or a dictionary that's what what we'll do uh, in order to become a, a set it needs to be a list if you're going to wrap it around a parenthesis otherwise you need to add an extra brackets for it so this still remains a list but we're gonna make it a, a, a dictionary what is going to happen is uh, you're going to create the key it's going to be equal as the value so development is going to have a development key which maps to a development value so that's how it's going to work mm, do i need anything else oh yeah of course the way that we are going to call this and i'm going to demonstrate that in a few moments so name is going to be each you can do value or you can do key here or is fine and I'm gonna show you both ways right now uh, so we save that we run our terraform plan There is also a to list to make it to make it a list. Same idea. We're gonna do that a little bit later on this same video. Um, so it's done. It's gonna destroy the previous ones, uh, obviously. Uh, and it's gonna create the two new ones, but using for each. So we apply it. with the uh, auto approve okay so basically red it was telling me what it was going to do what the actions to perform are and it's probably okay it's creating it should be done few more seconds I just need to destroy the other uh, what it tells me oh okay I know why that happened uh, I named named them the same so I confused the uh, the UI on on Azure so that that's what's going on. It's I confused the the UI on Azure, which is not a big deal. With I can clean it up over here, really quick, and just rerun this one without those things in there. Uh, let me do a plan. I might have corrupted the state file, but hmm, that's not really a big deal. Since we are not doing really anything in here, I can just uh, delete the state file altogether and, and start all over. If you have something important that you want to keep, then you can remove certain elements of the state file. Hopefully we won't have to do that because I really wanted to focus just on, on, on uh, doing a count for each and for loops. To one extent, too much the video on dealing with the state files we need to look at that but not in this particular video uh, okay so it doesn't have to destroy anything anymore okay so it's gonna work there you go so it completed successfully so the reason why the other one failed is because I have the same names I, and I confused the Azure UI that's all it was uh, okay so let me show you 
if I do instead of a value I do key basically it's gonna tell me that it's no changes to, to, to do that it matches because it maps to the same thing So key and value in this particular case when you're using two set it's the same exact thing so see no changes it's exactly the same thing so we don't need to do anything and if we do we switch places with this so instead of production here we put development um, we just move them around production uh, did I say before oh I think I did right huh well still it's gonna say no say no changes whatsoever uh, save all so plan it's gonna tell me no changes it doesn't matter if I move them because they are no longer mapped by the position on a list they are mapped by the actual key key per key key value pair <laughs> see no changes whatsoever so with that we can move to a for loops the actual for loops so we're going to create a new file so right click no file output outputs.tf the reason why I put it on the outputs is because it's the most common use I mean outputs doesn't support count doesn't support for each so you have to use a uh, for loops for for it so uh, output I'm going, I'm going to get the resource group names that's all I'm going to do uh, value equals for resource group no names just name resource group uh, this one is entirely up to you some people use for I am blah 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 I, I want to be like really explicit what I'm looking for in this case so that's a value that you can put whatever you feel like it in here for X that's fine too uh, for resource group name in Azure RM resource group dot RG and I want you to return the resource group name that's it uh, this one it will return the entire resource group uh, block everything that gets produced we'll throw it in there after that we're gonna do a little bit uh, more uh, we're gonna get I I specific elements inside that so let's do this one first and then I can show you how to get a specific elements within that file so throw save all there for plan okay uh, yeah all it's doing is the outputs that's all it is so it's telling me oh yeah I'm gonna return all that and yeah it will it will uh, it should be fairly quick because all I'm doing is just retrieving information that already exists that's it this is the output but I mean we're getting the entire thing that is created so let's say that I really 
I only interested on name. That's it. Only the name. So how do we do that? Well, looking at the structure, it looks like a dictionary of sorts. So that means that I can grab it by the key, like location, ID, name, tags. Uh, so for that, I only do name. That should do it. Uh, To a plan again and that and that should retrieve only the name oh. there you go it's telling me already in the plan itself oh yeah this is the thing that you're gonna get um, let's do the plan apply There you go, that's it. Return those two. Now we can, let's say, just for the sake of doing the exercise, like let's say that you want to retrieve the um, environment, which all, for both of them is development, but still uh, within the, um, the resource group. So we look at it and we're getting uh, resource group names. So we know that this one is a dictionary. So it's going to be instead of name, it's going to be tags. And the key is going to be environment. So let's do that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we can just get the tags first. And yeah, just little by little, baby steps just tags save all data for plan okay so it's telling me what I'm gonna get back which is they are the same so let's do an apply with auto approve keep in mind that auto approve is we only use it for testing like you're testing your terraform code and you want to see how it goes and if it produces the resources that it's supposed to produce you use it there And okay, we return the tags. It's a map, obviously. And it's already telling me basically how to get the information that I'm looking for in this case environment. Um, so, how do, do we do it? Is um, tags, keep that. We change the syntax a little bit. And we say inside tags, which is a dictionary, a map, we want environment. So we type environment. And that's it. That's how we are working the entire tree. Um, so we save it. Not a plan. Uh, what is complaining about? What I did wrong. Oh, of, yeah. <laughs> Closing bracket. There you go. That's all it was. Yep. I have one here and I want I have another one here. So another plan.
now we apply it and we should get develop and developing because that's that's the value that I have the same value for both um, Yeah, it doesn't have any value returning that, but just to show you that how you can uh, navigate um, uh, and get certain elements of the, the uh, Terraform uh, output. So we got that. Okay, let's add another output, why not? Output, this one is just to show you how a uh, to list works. To list example is better. Maybe a reserve uh, word. Uh, so value equals um, to list, of course. Uh, bar location. This one is going to give us an error for sure because bar location is a string and to list needs to have a those brackets indicating that it's an actual list. We are missing those in here, and that's fine. We're going to get an error, which is on purpose this time. So we save it, we do our plan. It should immediately tell us that, I don't know, what do you mean in here? It's a string, yeah. So, bracket here at the end, and another bracket, and that should fix that particular error. Now Terraform is going to say, oh yeah, okay, this is a list. It's a list, but with one element in there, which is fine. I mean, you can have an empty list if you want. Perfect. And the output is going to be all this. After this, we're gonna we're gonna get just the single element because that's the only thing that we care. But right now, I'm just showing you how it kind of works uh, because the dictionary is like key value. That's how you get stuff with the list. You use the positional uh, the position of the element inside the list. So we get it's a list. Tell it's me uh, with one element followed by a comma. If I only want that particular element, well, we know it's zero. That's its position. That's the first element on the of the list. Oops, I move somewhere else. Close it out. Um, oh, it's already saved. Perfect. Um, plan. Now we're just gonna get es us two. And that's how we get the uh, an element on the list, which we already saw that before. I mean, nothing new. Uh, apply with auto proof. And there you go, ES2, that's the element. Yep. So that's pretty much it. Uh, the only thing that we're missing is chomp, but all it does is just removes a trailing character, the new line uh, character from a, a, an output, an input, or an output to. Um, I use it for the IP address module. Uh, no, it's not the IP address, it's the HTTP one. To get the IP address, the public IP address, that's what I use it for. Um, well, let me show you how how it works uh, with Terraform Console. I won't uh, talk about Terraform Console in this video. I want to keep it uh, short because I don't want to throw too many things in there. I'm just just gonna show you how a uh, chump works. So, chump parentheses and let's say you have um, hello world followed by 
new line character. That's pretty common on uh, getting that from websites and stuff like that. So type enter and it drop the new line. This one. That's all it is. That's all Chump does. Nothing too magical about it. So with that, we say exit. I'm going in, going to destroy Terraform. Destroy those resources. And with this, uh, we conclude this uh, video session. Um, uh, thanks for listening and uh, happy terraforming.